Sergeant Yiki, a hero, a true Afro-American hero, which you've heard nothing about. Not ABC, not Fox News. Look at this tall, big Afro-American man running to do more rescue. And you've heard nothing about him. They don't want you to know about him. Just like they don't want you to know about Kerry James Gagan. Well, there was an FBI helicopter landed at the scene carrying FBI sacks at Special Agent in Charge Bob Ricks. Yiki's weapon was suddenly discovered only five minutes later, where the local cops just couldn't find it. But the FBI arrives, bingo, five minutes later, they find the weapon, the handgun. And the description of the weapon has never been made public. But the official record immediately became that it was a suicide. Do you buy that? I don't buy that any more than I believe these lying, thieving kids accusing Michael Jackson, where his trial is going on right now as we record this show April 13th, in Santa Maria. All right, you're probably wondering what happened to Mr. Gagan. Well, let's go back. We got one more minute of tape on Mr. Gagan. Let him speak because he, pre he predicts what's going to happen to himself. We'll go to that and I'll be back in a minute with Brianna Moore. After I sent this letter, they come to see me. And I might add that the real strange thing is that when I left Oklahoma City after visiting Mr. Jones, I took the bus to Vegas, and uh, I contacted the U.S. Attorney's Office down there and told him I was down there for the purpose of meeting somebody named Omar, and that I think he was involved in the Oklahoma City bombing. So they just said to call the FBI, and I called the FBI, and the man's name was Dave Shepard. We met outside the, in the, behind the Sahara in the parking lot, and uh, I told him I was there to specifically meet the person that fit the description of the of the people running from the scene, the people that said that they were Middle Eastern and, and all that, and I said, uh, <coughs> you want to observe me? You want to put this under surveillance? You want to look and see who this is? And he said, no. <coughs> I flew back to Denver, and uh, they, they just, uh, you know, like I said, I still have immunity and, and all those things, and, uh, you know, they, they're doing things that they can't do by statute, by regulation. You know, they, they have to. Well, Gagan... Predicted they can't afford to have Gagan walking around doing documentaries like you just saw on Second Thought, right here on Second Thought. You just saw something that nobody saw on CNN, nobody heard of on ABC, NBC, and even if I gave them the tape, they would never run it. This man has been labeled taboo, and right now he's sitting in a federal prison, and they're trying to make him crazy. So if he ever gets out on the false charges for which he was later arrested and put in jail at the Arapahoe County Jail in Colorado and then transferred to the federal penitentiary and he's been in federal custody. But wait a minute, he had a letter of immunity. That's why they didn't get him on delivering the C4 because to get him out, his defense attorney would have said, wait a minute, we've got your letter of immunity. You can't arrest this guy. So they got him on some other choice. Now I'm gonna give you the man who you saw sitting at Hoppy Heidelberg's right hand there during the Gagan uh, documentary before the Committee for Truth in Oklahoma City, which was done back in, on a Saturday night in 1999. This another tape I'm going to show you is V.Z. Lawton, a survivor of the blast who lost lots of friends in that bombing, so he's got a personal interest. Well, there, was, there was a lot of time uh, differential in involved in that. Uh, Mr. I, the first time I met Mr. Gagan was uh, June the 1st of 97. And uh, Bill Jasper from the New American Magazine was doing an interview with him in a motel up in Edmond. And uh, uh, Gagan gave his story, which uh, was totally separate from what we've been talking about here. He, he, was rep, he was representing the Middle Eastern terrorist group out of Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, he had a totally different story to tell. And this is, this is something that the government has never 
they, they couldn't help but acknowledge it because they'd given him a letter of immunity when he came in and reported to them that right. he found explosives mixed in with these drugs and went to them and said, what's going on? They said, well, we're getting ready to blow up the federal building and we'll pay you a quarter of a million dollars to help us. Uh, so uh, he... Now the people that said that were not the Arabs, right? Yeah. They were the Arabs. Yeah, they were. The, that was uh, Ali Muhammad, who's now in prison. Oh, they've caught Ali Muhammad. Well, he's the same guy that blew up the two embassies over in uh, Kenya. So they've nailed him finally on a different crime. Yep. But he was a principal person involved in the Alpha B Murrah building knockdown, right? According to Gagan. 